Today, we wrap up the conversation when it comes to the Raiders' strengths, weaknesses, and X factors. That plus a whole lot more on Monday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for June 3rd, 2024. You are Locked On Raiders, your daily Las Vegas Raiders podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. As always, if you're giving us a look on YouTube, we definitely appreciate that. The show grows each and every day. That's because of the support of you, Raider Nation. Of course, uh, my man Ari, who does a great job behind the scenes making sure that we're up on YouTube, we're looking good, and we're sounding good. We definitely appreciate him. Shout him out as he takes a lot of pride in his work. You can hit him up on Twitter at Ari Produces. You can hit me up as well at your boy Q254. And you know we got the Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line at 707-654-4693. Been getting a lot of great feedback uh, on the text line, on the phone line, a lot of different subjects about the conversations we've had uh, here on the show over the past week, week and a half or so. Uh, great feedback. We'll try to get as many calls in as possible coming up in segment number three of today's show. Segment number two, as we put a bow on Pro Football Focus's conversation about the Raiders' strengths, weaknesses, and X-factors, and really it was about all 32 teams across the National Football League, but we only focused on the silver and black. Jim Wyman, uh, the actual guy who did the breakdowns for the AFC side of things, the guy who did the breakdowns for the Raiders, joined my radio show on Friday and gave a little bit, uh, you know, further explanation, clarification, you know, talked about the team in general, what he thinks about them, what their opportunity is in 2020, and I think you'll be uh, surprised that uh, he is like a few people out there, a few outlets out there that actually thinks pretty highly of what the Raiders could do. Of course, they've got to get good, consistent quarterback play. We've talked about that quite a bit. Uh, you know, they've got to have some things go their way, but uh, he actually has some pretty good faith in the silver and black. You'll hear that conversation coming up in segment number two. Again, putting a bow on the uh, pro football focus conversation about strength, weaknesses, and X factors. Here in segment number one, just news and notes, a couple little nuggets gathered over the weekend, and we'll jump right into it after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I'll tell you more about them later on in the show, but let's go ahead and jump right into it. I mentioned on Friday's show that on Saturday, the first of the month, not only were the Raiders going to wake up, wake up, wake up, celebrate the first of the month, but they were also going to celebrate having some extra money in their bank account, which is the hood holiday, right? The first of the month, that's the hood holiday. That's what we all did, celebrated having a little bit of extra money. Well, they got a lot of it, right? How about now they're sitting around $34 million in salary cap space? That's good for six in the National Football League. Jimmy Garoppolo's contract has fallen off of their salary cap space, so that's why they're sitting where they are right now. So only the Patriots, who have $46 million in salary cap space, the Commanders at 43, the Lions at 40, the Cardinals at 35, the Jaguars at 34.1, one are above the Raiders. So uh, sitting there at six in the league is not bad. Not bad at all. So if you're Tom Telesco, you've got a lot of flexibility. You could do a lot of different things. You could do nothing, right? I mean, he's not one of those guys that just has to, because he has salary cap space, has to go spend it. He doesn't have to do that, but he does have some options, right? I think that they're going to address a couple guys that are in the, the locker room currently on the roster that need contract extensions, and there's a few guys to choose from that we've talked about quite a bit here on the show, from Malcolm Coons to Nate Hobbs to Trayvon Merrick to Marcus Epps to Robert Spillane. Like, those guys are all eligible uh, to get a contract extension if they were to so choose to. I don't think all those guys are going to get extended. I do think you'll see one or two of those guys get extended. Uh, I'd rather do it now than have to wait till after the season when they become free agents and have a possibility of losing them as long as they envision them, obviously, of being uh, long-term solutions at their respective positions that they play. They also can go out and sign a couple free agents if they want to. And again, they don't have to, but if they want to provide some extra competition for training camp, which I think they will, uh, I expect them to, to go out and get a couple other guys uh, for, you know, for, for training camp. I don't expect them to go out and sign any uh, free agents, anybody that could be like an impactful player. We've talked about a few cornerbacks, maybe an Xavier Howard, Stephon Gilmore, you know, wh whoever, whoever they, they look at. I, I just don't think that they need to sign them for OTAs, which will be back out at practice on Tuesday. I'll tell you more about them probably tomorrow's show. Uh, and then, you know, uh, and, and even mandatory minicamp, I don't think they need to be there for that. But as long as they have a couple of veterans that they want to bring in, if they do and choose to bring in a couple, uh, as long as they have those guys available for training camp, maybe even the first couple of days when they're there in Costa Mesa, I think everything will be fine. So uh, if you're Tom Telesco, you're sitting in a pretty good position, right? $34 million in cap space is a lot better than some GMs that take over teams. It's like $2 million. Yeah, what are you going to do with that? 
tough break, homie, <laughs> right? Not too much that you could do, not too much flexibility. So uh, sitting there with that much uh, salary cap space uh, allows you to be able to do a lot of different things. So Tom Telesco and the Raiders are in a good uh, position as far as that's concerned. I also wanted to bring your attention to a piece that Bucky Brooks put out on NFL.com. Of course, he works with the NFL Network with a lot of uh, draft stuff, but he also is a scout. He does some you know, breakdowns of just teams in general, uh, played for the Raiders back in the day. Uh, but he put out a piece that I saw. Matter of fact, I think I saw it on Saturday uh, from NFL.com, and he was talking about bigger impact quarterbacks. He was uh, Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, Gardner Minshew or Aiden O'Connell, predictions for two true quarterback battles and I don't even look at Russell Wilson or Justin Fields uh, I don't look at that competition in Pittsburgh as a real competition I think Russell Wilson is going to have that job at first and if he stinks up the joint then Justin Fields will come in I think it's that simple whereas I look at Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell and I really do believe it's a true quarterback competition so he goes on to say about Minshew throughout his career posted a 62.6 completion percentage with a 59 to 24 touchdown interception ratio in 49 career games as a part-time starter for the Jags Eagles and the Colts he says Minshew's high IQ and quick release enable him to pick apart opponents on catch rock and throw concepts designed to attack underneath coverage so that's just a little bit of what uh, Bucky Brooks had to say about Gardner Minshew what he brings to the table in this quarterback competition he goes on to say about Aiden O'Connell the 2023 fourth round pick earned a chance to compete for the starting job after guiding the Raiders to a 5-5 and record as a surprise rookie starter for their interim head coach O'Connell's intelligence and managerial skills are suited for an efficient offense built on rhythm throws and a punishing run game completing 62.1% uh, of his throws, 12 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Uh, that was the breakdown on Aiden O'Connell and uh, shows that he has earned the right to compete. Uh, I still believe that Aiden O'Connell is going to be the guy, and Bucky Brooks clearly does as well as he goes on to say, who will have the bigger impact on the 2024 Raiders? He says Aiden O'Connell. He says, I think that despite paying Minshew good money in free agency, the Raiders will ultimately hand the keys to the offense to the second-year pro, banking on his efficiency. I envision O'Connell operating Getz's scheme well, enabling him to manage the game effectively based on time, score, and situation. Given the league's razor-thin margins, the trust between head coach and quarterback is everything. This will result in O'Connell leading the team. And that last line right there is the deciding factor for me on why I think Aiden O'Connell is going to be the starting quarterback when they visit the L.A. Chargers uh, the, the first week of the season. It's that trust between the head coach and the quarterback. And AP has shown that trust since he took over as the interim coach on November 1st. And he's stuck with Aiden O'Connell the whole time. Now, that doesn't mean Aiden O'Connell could go to training camp and stink up the joint. He can't do that. He's got to continue to earn it and get better and better and show that he could be the leader of the team. Uh, so as long as he doesn't, like I said, stink it up, I think he'll be the, the, the quarterback week one because exactly what Bucky Brooks said, the trust between the head coach and the quarterback is everything. AP is fully 100% behind Aiden O'Connell. He trusts him. There's no doubt about that. So that, for me, like I said, is going to be the deciding factor. But that's what I got for you for segment number one. Today's Locked On Raiders podcast. A few little news and nuggets uh, collected over the weekend. Coming up in segment number two, we'll put a bow on the conversation that we had on Friday uh, from Pro Football Focus, Raiders roster rankings, strengths, weaknesses, and X factors. According to Pro Football Focus, you'll hear the conversation I had with Jim Wyman from PFF. We'll do that in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. <laughs> Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is FanDuel. And as all of us sit there and wait for the NBA Finals to get underway, they start on Thursday between the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. I know the Celtics right now are the favorites, but uh, you could win some money. Maybe you want to go with the uh, the underdogs, the Dallas Mavericks, who are playing some really good ball. Uh, maybe you trust them a little bit more because they've played most recently as the Boston Celtics have been sitting for quite a while. Well, FanDuel is the way to get it done. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and a whole lot more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to jump into the conversation I had on Friday on my radio show, Unnecessary Roughness on Raider Nation Radio 920 with Jim Wyman from Pro Football Focus. He's the one who did the AFC side of things in Pro Football's 2024 NFL roster rankings, strengths, weaknesses, and X factors for every starting lineup. So they did all 32 teams, but, but Jim was responsible for the AFC side of things. So it was perfect to have him on the show on on Friday to kind of explain himself and you know even clarify some some uh, interpretations that I may have had a little bit wrong so uh, here, here we go we start out with the conversation me just asking him about the formula that went into the piece put out there on Pro Football Focus Jim want to get your thoughts just about the article how it came together what was the formula and the thinking that went behind the piece as you guys were putting it together 
Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Uh, so basically how we did this article was Dalton and I kind of put together our own rankings of 32. I did the write-ups for the AFC teams. Dalton did the NFC teams with a couple mixed in there, but for the sake of our discussion, I wrote for the Raiders. Um, and then once we compiled our write-ups, we got on a call together because we're both working remote. And this kind of grouped each team together where we thought they might be long and then kind of discussed our rankings, went back and forth. Um, and ultimately, we had to weigh certain things more than others, such as like a quarterback might, a good, a good quarterback might put a team higher up than it might for some, mm-hmm. while other positions might not matter as much, per se. And another thing to consider with those rankings is that the only thing where we took like coaching into the factor was for the over under in terms of what we put in that article. Um, it did not factor into the final rankings. This is purely based on paper, not an actual power ranking. Uh, that makes sense. It really does. I always like to get the, the formula and the thinking behind the pieces as we deep dive into them. And so the Raiders roster came out at 23, and the biggest strength I don't think anybody was surprised by is the defensive line. We saw what they were able to do a year ago. We know what Max Crosby brings to the table. Now that they've added Christian Wilkins, how much better does that defensive line become with that big guy in the middle? Oh, significantly. Christian Wilkins makes all the difference in the world. I mean, without him, I mean – John Jenkins and, and uh, Adam Butler are nice pieces, but they're more of a depth kind of thing. When you add in a difference maker like Christian Wilkins, it opens up so many more things for the other pass rushers. You know, Malcolm Coons had a really nice year last year, kind of one of the least talked about studs in football right now. Like, he was great. And the Raiders do have a track record of edge rushers out of Buffalo performing. <laughs> um, and then Tyree Wilson. So that's a guy who we kind of considered being raw coming out the gate. But now that he's got someone like Christian Wilkins to kind of take the pressure off a little bit, he's going to see some more one-on-ones. We could see him become a lot more productive just because Christian Wilkins is drawing away so much attention from him. So this defensive line, they can make some noise, and especially with Kansas City, for example, their tackle situation is not great. So if it's the pass rush situation for the Raiders, can, might be able to steal some games for them. You know, when it comes to Tyree Wilson, and I, I was a fan of his when the Raiders selected him at number seven, but I knew that, you know, like you said, he was going to be a little raw and needed to grow. And, you know, you guys picked Aiden O'Connell, or you picked Aiden O'Connell as the, the X factor. Is there a chance that, based off what he does this year, he could ultimately end up being the Raiders' X factor? It really was between Tyree Wilson and Aiden O'Connell for me when I decided to pick the X factor. The reason I went with O'Connell, because... I already wrote about Wilson a little bit previously before that, and I wanted to address a different person who I think could be a factor. I did listen to your show earlier this morning, and I know um, you kind of disagreed a little bit with me having Aiden O'Connell as mm-hmm. an X factor. I would like to say we have different definitions of what an X factor is. For me, an X factor is someone who, like, the fate of the team kind of rests on. Okay. I know for you, I think you said with Trey Tucker, who I'm a fan of, by the way, is more of an under under the radar kind of guy so to speak, who could become something that could, could elevate the team a little further. It's a little bit of a different interpretation. And I, I like Trey Tucker. He really impressed me last year. I thought he was just going to be just a kick return specialist. And he took some, some, uh, some, uh, What's the one looking for? Some high-end snaps for the team last year. No, and it's funny that you mentioned that with the interpretation. We had our guy Jason in Maryland send us a text just a little while ago, and he agreed with you, and he thought that Aiden O'Connell could be the X factor. And, and really, I said, well, you know, we could be talking about different definitions, and that's, that's very, you know, very easy to do. And so I, I, I love the explanation, you know, that you bring to it. And, again, that's why I wanted to have you on. It was just to talk about it because, hell, I could be wrong. <laughs> Right. I mean, so, you know, it's 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 a good, healthy conversation. So I like from that standpoint where you're coming from, where, yeah, I mean, you're really dependent on him. So when it comes to O'Connell and Minshew, how do you think that this competition, you know, could potentially shake out? Or, or maybe just what do you think about Gardner Minshew in general? So I think Gardner Minshew might be the best backup quarterback in the NFL. He might be better than O'Connell. He might be the better option. It wouldn't shock me at all if Minshew was starting week one. That being said, I think we've seen what we're going to see out of Gardner Minshew. I, I don't mm-hmm. think there's any much more he can show us. And whereas Aiden O'Connell, like he had some nice games in college. Um, I went to Indiana and he okay. went to Purdue, so I have he, he, I got he picked us apart quite a bit. <laughs> so I'm very very familiar with his game. But also too, he didn't look too bad against Michigan in the Big Ten title game that year. 
So there's, there's, there's something with him. And so I think they might want to give it a go, see what they got at some point. And if it doesn't work out, they're not like out of the playoff picture because, because we saw with Minshew in the Colts last year, he's more than capable of getting you to like a wild card spot at the very least. I mean, Colts were a drop pass and a backup running back away from making the playoffs mm-hmm. with Gardner Minshew as their starter. So I think, I, I think O'Connell may have a short leash with Minshew lurking. But if he's even decent, I think this Raiders team could sneak into the playoffs. They're, they're definitely on paper to me the second best AFC West team. A couple people have texted in and said uh, the offensive line. They're looking at the offensive line as the X factor, and uh, obviously you got to keep Aiden O'Connell upright or whoever's the quarterback upright, and got to open up holes for the running game. Could you see the offensive line being that, which is actually what you have as the weakness of the Raiders in 2023? Yes, it is. Um, so left tackle Colton Miller, big fan of his. Like even out of college, like I. I was a little higher on him than I thought most were, and he got to kind of a rocky start, but he seems to have figured it out. Uh, Andre James is one of the more underrated centers in football. Like, he's not going to jump out at you, but he just does everything well. And then Dylan Parham, he was another guy who I thought was pretty solid coming out. Uh, I know there's some question marks at left guard and right tackle. And I know we, oh, you talked about this earlier. Hmm. And you actually hit the nail on the head with my process about how I went about going out of that starting lineup. So... I gave the benefit of the doubt to the Raiders. I have Cody Whitehair listed as a left guard, and then Andrews Pete listed as a right tackle. That could very easily change by the time we do the updated version of these, which last year when we did this article, we did a second version right before the regular season started, and then we kind of made some changes as the preseason played out. I'm currently giving the benefit of doubt to Whitehair, just having a down year starting as the left guard, but Jackson Powers Johnson could very easily take that spot by the time we do the updated rosters. Like I said, Whitehair has been pretty solid for six years, just coming off a horrible season this past year. And then Andrews Pete versus Tyrod Munford. I think that could be a solid training camp battle. Munford could very easily come out on top. Um, I just gave the benefit to the veteran at this point, but that, that could be another thing that gets updated by the time we get closer to the regular season. I like it. I really do. Jim Wyman, Pro Football Focus. He's with us here. Raider Nation Radio 920. We're talking about strengths, weaknesses, and uh, X factors for uh, for the silver and black. And even rookie to watch. And he talked about Brock Bowers. And I think that that's no doubt about it. That's the guy that everyone's going to be focused in on. As far as just, you know, what you know about Brock Bowers, what you've seen from him, you know, and just looking at the Raiders as a team, how many different ways do you think that the Raiders and Luke Getze could use Brock Bowers in this offense? Uh, the options are almost unlimited. I was a little surprised at first when the Raiders took Brock Bowers with the first time. I think a lot of people were, yep. especially considering Michael Mayer was already there and had a pretty nice rookie year, albeit kind of went under the radar considering think, what Sam Laporta and Dalton King K did. But Mayer showed himself that he's a pretty solid option. Um, with Brock Bowers, though, this, he's probably the best tight end prospect we've ever seen. I remember some people were telling me, like, oh, Kyle Pitts, this guy's an animal. I was like, just wait for Bowers in two years after he was a freshman. He offers some versatility that most tight ends don't. And he almost operates as another wide receiver because he can play that slot role just as often or as like, just like the H-back position. It, they can get real creative with Bowers and Mayer on the field at the same time. They're like It's something you can do. And Bowers probably provides as much upside as any tight end we've seen in a long time. And I think the Raiders are going to have no shortage of options in the passing game at the very least. Yeah, I'm excited about what he could do. They obviously need to score more points than they did in 2023. He's going to help them do that, but they've got to get good, uh, consistent quarterback play from either O'Connell or Gardner Minshew, as you pointed out. Well, we'll close out with this, Jim, and it's been fantastic stuff that you've uh, brought to the table. The AFC in general, to me, is just a juggernaut, right? I mean, I could make an argument for 13 teams to make the playoffs, and we know there's only seven playoff spots. How competitive do you see this AFC conference being as far as just teams that are jockeying and fighting for playoff spots? It's going to be about as cutthroat as it was last season. Um, the Chiefs only got better after a Super Bowl winning Boston. Just look at that wide receiving room. Like, even if Rasheed Rice does get suspended this season, they do have some guys to kind of fill the void for a little bit. And then Teams like the Steelers kind of improved a little bit. Bengals are going to be getting Joe Burrow back. Ravens just added Derrick Henry. Um, Dolphins are going to have their, their plethora of receivers. And the Raiders aren't that far behind. I mean, there are some guys on the team who might speak up on people. I know uh, they added Jack Jones late last year, which yeah. if they can get a full season out of him, this is potentially one of the shutdown corners in the league. Like, 
he made some plays over the last two years between his time with the Patriots and the Raiders. It's just a matter of him keeping his head on straight for a full year. But if he can do that, this guy's an animal. Like I, I, He's one of my favorite young cornerbacks on the field in football. So there it was right there, and, and that's why I like to have guys like Jim on. Right after talking about the the article that he had, and you know breaking down the Raiders' strengths, weaknesses, X factors, you know rookies to watch, and and all that, going through everything we went through, you know, for him to say, yeah, hey, actually, I listened to the podcast, uh, and and actually, my interpretation was different than your interpretation. So it's always good to be able to hear from the person who actually put it together and say, no, this is actually what I was talking about here. You kind of you know didn't didn't understand where I was going with it. So that's cool. It's good for clarification, and it makes sense. But you can hear right there from Jim, he actually, you know, likes the Raiders, right? He's not saying that they're a, a team to go win the AFC West, but uh, to be the second-best team in the AFC West. And if you're the second-best team in the AFC West, which the Raiders were a year ago, right, you're putting yourself in position. Remember, they were in the playoff conversation until Week 17, right? And so after that, then all of a sudden they weren't. But, I mean, if they could stay in the mix all, all season long – Right, they can they can find a way to get in there at the end, and who knows who knows what's going to happen with Kansas City. You know, maybe they could end up being a team that wins the division. But I mean, right now you got to tip the cap to Kansas City just because they've been so dominant. But I don't think that the Raiders are going to be uh, that bad team that a lot of outlets think that they're going to be. And you know, we always talk about the six and a half win total. I definitely think they're going to go well over that in 2024. So maybe you go to FanDuel.com and bet the over on the 2024 Raiders and win you some money. That's what I got for you, though, for segment number two. Hopefully you enjoyed that conversation, kind of putting a bow on the conversation that we started on Friday. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and text draft at Locked On Raider Podcast voicemail line 707-654-4693. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about game time. And game time is ready right now for the NBA Finals. I'm ready for the NBA Finals. Are you ready for the NBA Finals? And how are you going to watch the NBA Finals? Do you plan on going to Boston? Do you plan on going to Dallas and checking out some of the games up close and personal? Maybe you are. If so, that's awesome. Did you get your tickets? You didn't? Don't worry. Game time is the place for you. They can help you get your tickets quick, fast, and in a hurry. And even if you want to wait till the last minute, like the series gets started uh, in Boston on Thursday, maybe you even wait till Wednesday. Maybe you're there locally and you're waiting till Wednesday to decide me and you and a, you and a buddy want to go. All right, we'll hit up game time. They can help you get those last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, anything that you need, including the NBA Finals. They're going to help you do that. Uh, they've got great seat views, so you can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you even buy your seats. Right now, take the guesswork out of buying NBA final tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code Locked On NFL. It's all one word for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create the account, use the promo code Locked On NFL, all one word, L O C K E D O N NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start off with a call from 801 Raider, calling to talk about potential impact players for the team in 2024 and wants to talk about a rookie not named Brock Bowers. Here he is, 801 Raider. Hey, what's up, Q? This is uh, 801 Raider. Apologies if anyone else from the 801 has used that name. Happy to switch it up, but just wanted to call kind of – Build off of a show that you did a couple weeks ago about, you know, who you think a, kind of a standout player can be on offense or defense. Um, I know you didn't want to talk about rookies, but I would I want to throw in the name Dylan Lauby as someone that I'm really excited to watch this year. I think he could be a standout player. He seems like he really just, you know, he's hard-nosed, blue-collar. seems like he really fits in with kind of the culture that we're going for. So just wanted to throw that name out there um, and also wanted to add, I'm going down to Vegas in a couple weeks for work, and if, if I can find any of those sports books that actually have us at six, six and a half games, I'm going to be gladly putting down some, some money for the year. I think six and a half is an insult, um, especially because we, you know, we won more games than that last year, and it seems like we've just been moving in the right direction, making good moves in the offseason, so pretty excited about this next year. Thanks for all you do, Q. Yeah. Thanks so much for the call, my man. I appreciate you. Dylan Lobby. Yeah, he's definitely a guy that I believe will be an impact player, the sixth round running back out of New Hampshire. Uh, I do think he's going to be an impact player, and this is how. I think with the new kickoff rules, he's going to be making an immediate impact on special teams. Uh, he's a guy that as I'm at OTAs and they're going through their special teams drills, and uh, you know, especially in the kick return game, uh, he's a guy that looks very comfortable catching the ball off the bounce, catching the ball, you know, just receiving the ball as as the 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 guy the 
the um, returner, the main returner. Uh, he just looks the most comfortable out there. And there's some new variations to this kickoff rule that all these uh, players are going to have to get used to. So he's going to be able to do that. He's also going to be able to cover kicks, uh, all of that. So that's where he's going to make his immediate impact, I, I think. But I also believe that he's going to make an impact uh, out of the backfield. I think you're going to see him catch some passes out of the backfield. Uh, they've been lining him up kind of all over the place. I'm not saying he's going to do a lot of heavy lifting. I don't want to put a total on how many touches he's going to get offensively this season, but I do think he's got an opportunity to, to make an impact. And I know the Raiders are really high on Dylan Lobby, the six-round pick out of New Hampshire. So good call by you, 801 Raider. And, uh, yeah, like I said before, that six-and-a-half number, that's an easy number, right? Go to FanDuel.com. You ain't got to come to Vegas to place a bet on that. Go to FanDuel.com and hit the six-and-a-half over and uh, feel pretty good about that. The Raiders have gone over their win total three out of the last four years, so I'm with you on that. Thanks for the call, my man. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Rich Homie Clint. It says, hey, Q, Rich Homie Clint from Enemy Territory in the 816. I wanted to touch on the X-Factor discussion. To me, X-Factor is all about interpretation. I think Pro Football Focus and myself describes the term as a make-or-break player. To them, Aiden O'Connell or any quarterback on the roster can make or break our season. To me, under this definition, I think our X factor is offensive coordinator Luke Getze. I think we'll have average to above average quarterback play from either quarterback, but our OC can make or break the season. What are your thoughts, Q? Thanks for all you do. Go Raiders. That's from Rich Homie Clint. Had to say that name really slow. You can get yourself in trouble. You say that name kind of fast and mess that up. But no, you're absolutely right. And, and that's why, again, I, I brought that conversation with Jim Wyman to the table today because it is about interpretation, right? Uh, you heard from what he had to say. Uh, Luke Getze definitely could be the X factor. He's got to prove that he could use all the weapons that the Raiders have and put their team in the best position to score an extra touchdown a game, right? I mean, that's basically what they need. They need to come up with about another seven points per game as they had a season ago. And really, I say that because they averaged, when it was all said and done, about 19 points a game. But that's also with the 63 points that they they put up on the Chargers. So I think that they averaged probably more, and I could do the math. I can go back and actually do it. I just haven't. I'm sure it's probably closer to 16 or 17 points a game. So that's why I'm saying another touchdown. Get them closer to around 24. And that would be high for last year because the scoring was down last year. But I do think it's going to get back up. But they need to get there around 24 points per game. And he's going to be in charge of that, right? And so I had a really good discussion about the X Factor on Friday on my radio show. And some people talked about the offensive line being the X Factor. And I could see that as well. They've got to keep that quarterback upright. They've got to open up holes for the run game, right? That all makes sense. But I, I like where you're going with Luke Getze. Uh, he's, he's, you know, he's got some... He's got some work to do, right? It wasn't great in, in Chicago. He's getting another opportunity to get it done uh, with the Raiders, and, and we'll see if he can do it. Uh, him and Antonio Pierce have the same vision of what they want done, uh, clearly, or, or AP wouldn't have hired him. So we'll see if now they can go out there and execute it. But thanks so much for that text, man. Good stuff. It's great to hear from you. Up next, got a call from Sacktown Raider. He's calling to talk about the running back room and a guy who he thinks can make an impact on that position group. Here he is, Sacktown Raider. Thank you. It's Sacktown Raider calling in. Uh, I know that there's been an ongoing discussion about who uh, is going to be the running back for the Raiders, and everyone is saying, you know, Zamir, it's Zamir White's, uh, Zamir White's job to lose. And I think I agree with that. However, a name that people aren't talking about that will be in the mix, I believe, in the quarterback room to an extent this year is Brock Bowers. Um, I have a feeling that he is going to uh, take some snaps at the quarter, or uh, sorry, running back position uh, during the year to some degree, uh, and I think uh, I think he's going to excel at it too. I think he, I think honestly, he thinks he's going to be placed everywhere around the field, other than maybe quarterback and offensive line. Um, but I could, but I know he took snaps at running back at Georgia, um, and he did, and he was really, really good at that. Um, obviously they use him more as a pass catcher, um, as, a, as opposed to just like a downhill runner, but he could do that too. So, um, I just wanted to throw that name out there. I think he's going to be utilized in that way. And, um, I really hope so. It'd be great to, to get another body in that room and, um, see him play at running back, uh, to change it up a little bit, be a change of pace type of guy. Anyways, Q, thanks for all that you do and go Raiders. Sacktown, thanks so much for the call. Brock Bowers. Uh, he'll definitely be lined up in the backfield at times, right? He'll be lined up everywhere. In OTAs, he's been taking handoffs. He's taking jet sweeps. He's done end of rounds. I mean, he's, he's capable of lining up anywhere. He's lined up as a traditional tight end. He's lined up out, outside, out wide, uh, right? I mean, he, he can do it 
just about everything, right? Now, again, not going to say he's going to get 100 snaps or 100 carries, uh, but he'll definitely be lined up at running back at times. Again, he's just going to be the ultimate weapon, I believe, for the silver and black. So uh, yeah, that's a good observation from you. Again, I think when you talk about the running backs, though, it's going to be Zamir White, Alexander Madison, uh, you know, and then Dylan Lobby is going to have something to say about that as well. So they've got a lot of horses in the stable. That is the running back room. We'll see how they use them and if those are the guys moving forward. But thanks for the call, my man. I definitely appreciate you. Up next, got a text from G-Thang in Redondo Beach. It says, hey, Q, it's G-Thang in Redondo Beach. I like your pick of Trey Tucker as the X Factor. I think he'll, have a, he'll be a big key to the offense this year. Tucker led the team in yards per target, yards per, yards per catch, and longest reception. He made some rookie mistakes, but he only got 300 snaps. Aside from Tucker, our receivers were slow, pain and sl- plain and simple. Speed was never Devontae's game. Jacoby Myers is slow, and so is Mayer and Renfro. No wonder we struggled to score. Bowers is a step in the right direction, and maybe Guyton or Gallup will help, but we need speed outside of pressure safeties. With no deep threat on the field, safeties are too comfortable crowding the box. Tucker provides that. So I think you're right, Q. Trey Tucker needs to be on the field for this offense to reach his potential. He is the biggest X factor. That's from G-Thang and Redondo Beach. Thanks so much for the text. I appreciate you. And yeah, that's the funny thing. It's like I hear some people talking about you know, Devontae and Jacoby, it's like, oh, man, you know, Devontae is a, such a deep threat because he did catch a lot of deep passes from Derek Carr the first year, but that was more of just him being an elite route runner and getting open, right? It wasn't just because he was a speed burner because he's never been a speed guy. Jacoby Myers isn't either. He's a really good really good wide receiver, right? I mean, he's, he gets open and makes it happen. Devontae, I don't have to speak for Devontae. He's, he's Devontae. He does what he does. Um, you know, and so, yeah, I think that the speed of Tucker could provide and be, uh, you know, a, a look at as a, as an X factor. Uh, I do understand where, you know, they were coming from. Jim Wyman was coming from when he was talking about Aiden O'Connell as, as being the X factor and, and others, just like we had a, a, a call about a, or a text about Luke Getze, uh, the offensive coordinator. But to me, that's how I was thinking too. Trey Tucker with his speed could really help open up the offense. So uh, Guyton, or, Guyton has a, a speed, Gallup not so much. Uh, we'll see what happens. That should be a good wide receiver competition in training camp. But I would like Trey Tucker to be the X factor. Just provide that speed element, uh, sharpen up his hands, and sharpen up his, his, uh, you know, his footwork, and he should be where he needs to be. Thanks so much for that text. I do appreciate you. We'll close out with a call from Raider Eddie in Denver. He's calling to talk about a few different subjects based off Friday's podcast, Pro Football Focus roster rankings, and also Brock Bowers, and has a couple questions that he'd like to throw my way. Here he is, Raider Eddie in Denver, closing us out. Thank you. What's up? This is Raider Eddie in Denver. Hey, I'm listening to the podcast here on Friday, and I have a couple thoughts. They're both around the uh, offensive line. Um, one of the thoughts uh, is coming from Pro Football Focus, they said that the Raiders' biggest area of weakness is the offensive line, and I agree. And then you have a caller that uh, is also talking about best player available. One year that was a kicker uh, for the Raiders with Sebastian Janikowski. This past draft, it was a tight end uh, when we already have uh, a highly drafted young tight end, and we didn't really need that position. And I know some of the, the conversation as well. Uh, Bowers is the best player available. Uh, well, Bowers is a, a weapon. He's not just a tight end. For me, I, I'm still you know, cynical about it. So going back to the offensive line, I have two questions for you. Uh, do you think Andres Pete, do you have confidence in Andres Pete to, uh, to play at left tackle if uh, Colt Miller stays out uh, with his injury? And then, um, and uh, so what's your confidence level in him? And then also, what's your confidence level in Munford to hold it down at the starting right tackle spot? My big worry is that our O-line could be one of the worst O-lines in the league. And if that if that's the case, sorry, you're just not going to score uh, a lot if you can't block, um, if you can't run, if you can't have time to, to throw passes. And that's why this whole... Uh, this whole description about, hey, we got Bowers, we need to score more, that was the right pick. That's why that just doesn't hold a lot of water for me Um, because, again, you need to block somebody, you need to be able to run the ball and do all that kind of stuff. So, I, 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 again, I'm very cynical. So help me out, Q. What's your confidence level in these guys that, that really PFF and and it seems like the analysts don't expect a whole lot from. Okay, thanks, Q. Bye. 
Raider Eddie, thanks so much for the call. Appreciate you. The offensive line is going to need to be good. We know that. It's going to have to be a lot, lot better for sure. Uh, you know, at times in 2023, it wasn't bad at all. There was times that it struggled, but, uh, you know, there was times that they actually did a really good job. And as far as confidence in these guys, it's funny. I have confidence in them, but it's different than really the way that you worded the question. So uh, as far as Pete at left tackle, no, I don't have any confidence in him. But I do have confidence in Thayer Munford if Colton Miller were to go down to be able to fill that that left tackle void. He just was very comfortable there last year. So I think that, you know, obviously in a short term, not a long term capacity, that Thayer Munford could do a good job holding that spot down. Now, the question is the right side and Thayer Munford. I don't have confidence in him at the right tackle spot right now because we haven't seen it. We haven't seen it consistently, so I don't know. Right. I mean, he didn't do that very much in 2023. Right. I mean, so it, that that's that's for me. I don't want to just say, oh, I have all the confidence in the world because Thayer Mumford talked to us after practice and said he's going to be the guy. Like he looks like that they're they have him slotted in there to be the guy. Right. That's what it absolutely looks like right now. But I'm not 100 percent sure that he's going to be able to hold that down until we actually see it. And I don't even think he can get mad at that. Right. I mean, he was a little upset by whoever was saying that the Raiders needed a right tackle. But until he proves it, I think that that's a fair question. So I have it's funny. I have confidence in Colton Miller at the left tackle spot. I have confidence in, in, in JPJ at the uh, left guard spot. He's got to stay healthy, though. That's going to be his thing, right? Can he stay healthy throughout the course of a season? That's something I'll pay attention to. Andre James at the center spot, I feel comfortable there. Dylan Parham at the right guard spot, I feel comfortable there. Just who's going to hold down the right tackle spot? And if Colton Miller needs someone to fill in for him, like I said, I do believe it could be Thayer Mumford, but then that takes him off the right tackle spot. So there's still definitely some questions. Right. There's definitely some questions and, and the veterans that were brought in. And that's why when pro football focused Jim Wyman, when he said uh, the projected starting lineup for the Raiders, I was like, yeah, I look at that offensive line and he put those veterans there and he explained it. I mean, you heard him right there. He just gave them the benefit of the doubt. I give the young dudes the benefit of the doubt over the older dudes. The older dudes are kind of you already know who they are. I think they're good quality depth if needed. But that's that's where I'm at. Right. In case of emergency, break glass, not hey, let's go ahead and slide those guys in as starting, you know, a, a left, the a left guard and a, and a right tackle. Uh, that wasn't that I, I wasn't built like that. <laughs> so that's that's not for me. But Raider Eddie, thanks so much. And I think it's fair uh, to think about the offensive line. Like I, I'm not worried about them not drafting a guy. I know that you're you know pretty hung up on that. That's fine. I think Brock Bowers is definitely an addition that the Raiders need. And we'll see what happens with the offensive line. They'll have to put it together. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with the pick. Uh, I know where you're coming from. I understand it. And we'll see. You know if it true comes out to be true. It very well could be six weeks into the season. You say, yeah, look. Look at the offensive line. It's a, it's a mess. Should have gone and got the right tackle who was picked right after the Raiders, right, by the Saints, right? They went and got Fuaga at number 14, and the Raiders took Bowers at 13. But, uh, you know, I mean, just, again, I, I think that the reasoning that they took Bowers made sense. So right now, until we see it, we just don't know what was a smarter move at the end of the day. But thanks for the call. I do appreciate you. Thanks for all the feedback on the show, and hopefully enjoyed the conversation that we had with Jim Wyman. As I mentioned, we'll be back out at OTAs tomorrow. I'll talk about it on tomorrow's show before we uh, get out there, get, be able to talk to some more coordinators and obviously talk to some more players. And uh, well, tomorrow we'll have uh, more calls and texts on the show. We'll have more news and notes and, uh, and a little bit more conversation as we have each and every day here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.